What up, guys? Captain Crizzo, Live Runner Gaming, back again for the second time tonight. Tonight, we will be playing some Serious Sam VR The Last Hope. I've been meaning to do this. We picked this up right around Christmas time, and we get to do a stream on it, which actually uh, kind of surprises me because. We've actually played a lot of this game in comparison with the other ones, so. Um, I will give you a heads up though, this game likes to talk. Uh, so, yeah, you'll probably hear all kinds of stuff. Well, Serious Sam likes to talk, and um, sometimes the game itself just commands you to do things, so you'll probably be hearing that. And I'll try to keep uh, that down to a minimum. Also, this game is very loud, it just tends to be more. Uh, I don't know, in your face than a lot of other games out there. Strangely enough. I don't know why it does that. Maybe it's just the music or something like this. Um, I'm just making a quick adjustment here, guys. There we go. That way you'll be able to hear it at least a little bit better. But, um, like I was saying, this... It tends to be kind of a loud game, it's, uh, but I don't really have a problem with that because the soundtrack of this game is just incredible. So, anyway, catch you guys back up to speed. Like I said, this is Serious Sam VR The Last Hope, and uh, I don't know what we're going to do. We'll just kind of dive in here and do whatever. Uh, let's try a daily challenge. What do we got going on here today? Um, hmm. This video challenge is today. Today's challenge. Let's check it out. So, yeah, in light of the recent um, you know, attention that violent video games have been getting in the press as of late, here at Lag Runner Gaming, we decided. I guess to uh, maybe celebrate the occasion by playing some extremely violent video games, specifically in VR. And uh, we did make a video of Gorn earlier. Hey, man, it's been a while since I played this. Let's see, how do I do this? Oh, well, that's my shield. Ah, okay, okay. So, yeah, take a look at this, guys. This is. We're gonna make these. Here we go. Right, so let's see what happens. Oh, frogs! What? Those are new. I haven't seen a lot of those lately. Maybe even at all. Maybe in the swamp earlier, but nothing I remember. So yeah, in light of... You know... The recent attention that violent video games are beginning, which, as everybody knows, is nothing new. Every time some kind of violent activity happens, especially when it has to do with high school kids and things like that, which is a tragedy every single time, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't mean to speak ill of their, of their experiences at all. All I mean to say is that every single time something like that some tragedy like this happens. Uh, the media is super fast to try and blame just about any situation that they can. And without a doubt, video games finds its way in that debate so quickly every single time. You guys, you know, I'm probably older than the majority of folks out there playing games. I've been a gamer my whole life, but I do know that there's a huge audience for adults. Oh man, I'm in big trouble. Focusing too much on talking. But whatever. This is the daily challenge. Who cares? Anyway. Um, see, I'm old enough to remember when, you know, everything from 
the original Mortal Kombat was supposedly tainting the kids and sure making works. everybody violent, you know, but let's get real, man. Like, video games don't make people violent. People are just violent, and that's why we have violent video games. They don't make us violent. We're already violent. These are just kind of a reflection of what that violence manifests as when it's not actual violence. This is a safe outlet for violence. And it's fine. You know? But, but there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do about, you know, the media and shit like that trying to blame video games for the violence in society. It's completely the other direction, guys. It's like trying to blame horror movies for the violence in society. You know, you guys seem to forget that there are, there are video games are all over the world. People are playing them all the time, and they've been playing them for a while now. There's nothing new about them. You know, America is. You know, I'm not I'm not one for statistics, but I'm pretty sure that just by pulling numbers out of a hat, I can say that America is pretty uh, has a much more violent culture than, say, Japan or something. And Japan plays way more video games than Americans do. So, oh man, this is not good. Yeah, like that. Share, share your, what you think, what you feel. Share in the comments down below. Personally, I just think it's I think it's old news. It's the same old crap, and it's just for ratings. It gets, you know, it's the kind of thing that gets old ladies all worked up. They don't know anything about video games or whatever, and they think that their kids are all fine. When in reality, you know, it wasn't that long ago the kids were playing fucking. You know, cowboys and Indians or whatever. That's just been part of what we've always done. Especially in America. Uh, is that is that a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. But it's not video games' fault. That's for damn sure. It's a video games are are. A, a reflection of that violent culture. You know, that's why we like them. That's why we play them. That's why people create them. Because it's just part of our fucking nature. In America, we, we like guns and shit. We're, we're just kind of a rambunctious, violent people. When we come from the Wild West and bullshit like that, you know. Is it good? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, but it's not I'm not claiming responsibility for all the actions of people in the past and shit and all the horrible things that they did. I'm just saying that that is a part of our culture and it's something that we that has molded us into what we are now. Parts of it are good, and parts of it are bad. I think it'd be stupid to say that all of American culture is bad. You know, but it. But I think that it's also fair to say that um, you can't only do have some bad parts of our culture. We are violent. We like mass shootings. We definitely, uh, as far as like school shootings, again, I'm just pulling statistics out of my ass. I don't know what's actually the real situation because I'm not, I'm in VR right now, battling aliens on another planet. I don't. I'm not looking at statistics, I just know what I see. And I'm sure that America definitely has like more mass shootings than other parts of the world as long as, you know, when we're considering like kids and things like this. I could be wrong, I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, but I don't hear about it a lot from other countries. Um, 
people want to blame guns because we have a lot of guns and people have access to guns, but it's not easy to get guns. I don't get access to these kind of well, I can get these guns, but you can't get machine guns and all this stuff. I mean it's not yeah, you can get guns, but it's not the guns' fault either. It's just part of the culture of what we are. Like I said, this is all about, you know, I mean, heck, we, we're all about, like, the Wild West and all that crap, cowboys and Indians. It wasn't that long ago that kids, 16, 17, 18, they were fighting in world wars, man. They were killing the Nazis and shit. And at the same time, they were Nazis, you know. We think that we're so special, that everything, we're so different. Uh huh. Rest assured, violence is just a thing. It's just always been a thing. It's only recently that we've had the, uh, the access to. Gee whiz. It's only been recently that we've had access to this worldwide communication. And because of that, we hear about every damn thing that ever happens. And we also want to shift to more people than there ever was. So more things tend to happen. And then we think that it's some kind of horrible thing that's going on. But, you know, in reality, I think statistically violent crimes in America and worldwide as a whole have actually been dropping, even though... It's not what we seem to hear about. What we tend to hear about is that of course, everything is getting more and more violent. But that, I, I, as, as I, I think, I do believe that I have seen some, or at least heard of some statistics that that could combat that statement. You can't blame that show on video games, man. You really can't. There might be a lot to say that video games keep people from freaking out. Doesn't mean that you should let little kids play video games like this. This is a very violent video game. I'm killing literally everything that moves. I don't have any friends here. I'm using Fully automatic. These are not fully semi-automatics. These are fully automatic. See how that works? Where I hold the button down and it shoots the bullets. That's a fully automatic, folks. And when I run out of ammo, you'll see what a semi-automatic looks like. Okay? For you, for those of you who don't know much about guns, you know, I'm assuming gamers tend to know a little bit more about guns than than I guess the, the average population that doesn't have that kind of knowledge. Not to say gamers know about guns, just say they know a little bit more about guns. TVs. So, you know, I push the button once, and one bullet comes out. Bang, 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 bang. That's how that works. That's called a semi automatic. Okay? And that's how these. That's how you differentiate different kind of guns. It's not bullet size. There's no such thing as assault rifles. Even though in video games there is things that as assault rifles, which is stupid. It just perpetuates ignorance. But, man, here we are. More set. See, now, now, these are laser guns, and you can't actually buy them. Uh, they're not real. <laughs> but, there is no such thing as a fully semi-automatic weapon. There's no such thing, okay? It's either a fully automatic or it's a semi-automatic. And then there's a couple other categories uh, that we can discuss if you really want to talk about guns. But fully semi-automatic is not a thing, okay? You keep hearing that shit on the news. It's not real. It's perpetuating ignorance. If people want to have a good debate about violence and guns, 
They need to fucking have their shit together because otherwise they just sound fucking stupid. And if you sound fucking stupid willingly, well then, there's, you don't have any hope whatsoever of having a legitimate discussion with somebody who knows the fuck they're talking about. Because you just sound like a dumbass. You know, so yeah, if you want to have a real discussion about gun violence and the kind of restrictions that should be placed on guns and things like this, then you should at least know what you're talking about. Don't use terms like fully semi-automatic or full semi-automatic. That, that's a stupid thing. It's not real. No, it's never been real. It's, that's not, it's not how this shit works. It's not how any of this works. Look at these guns. Now these are most definitely fully automatic. So these are semi automatics Oh man, I'm in trouble. I'm in big, big trouble. I'm in big, big trouble. I'm in big, 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 big trouble. Boom. That. Uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in big, big, big trouble here. Probably gonna die. Okay. Oh, I did get a pretty decent score though, huh? Yeah, so if you know, I mean, if you're if you're talking about guns and there are specific restrictions that you want encouraged on specific kind of firearms, know what you're talking about, and at least have an educated perspective on the matter. Because if you're trying to have a, a decent debate with somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. And then you do use terms like full semi-automatic, they're gonna think you're an idiot. And and you don't have debates, you don't have intellectual conversations with people that, that quite clearly don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And especially when that has to do with making laws and things that affect life-altering decisions and things like this, you know, and the rights to defend oneself and all of the many, many nuanced issues that have to do with firearm use and ownership. If you don't, if you don't know what it is that you're talking about, if you haven't done at least enough research so that you can use the proper terminology, then you really have no place in the argument because, well, Quite frankly, you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And, and I'm not saying that there shouldn't be restrictions on certain firearms and things. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I, I'm saying make your point. I'm saying case. You know, state your case. Make a good argument. Know what the hell you're talking about. Don't sound like a damn idiot. If, because if you do, People that will be making the decisions about what's going on. You know, I don't think that you would want if there are if there are people making laws about things they have no idea about, let's say that, that affects your lifestyle specifically, you know? And and you're sitting there, you have to listen to this this completely ignorant ideas of, you know, from coming from people that have no clue, no clue what they're talking about. Now let's say you do know what you're talking about, and, you know, you're not going to listen to them. <laughs> you're you're going to think they're an idiot, and rightfully so. But if those people were making laws, if they were, if they were affecting your life directly, well then, Crap. Well then, you know, you have every right to uh, be upset about that. And that's that's what's going on with this this gun restriction debate thing, is that a lot of the people that are trying to argue against the ownership and the rights of gun owners, they, they quite frankly just don't know what the hell they're talking about. It's from 
Some of them do. Some of them do. I'm not going to say all of them. But the media has a way of showcasing the specific stories, the ones that get the most views, you know. They're the most... Uh, they tug on those heartstrings of those old ladies that don't know what the fuck's going on. And because, you know, those same old ladies are the ones that fucking... They read the tabloids and they... You know, they watch fucking Oprah and stuff. And it's a, it, that, that's how they... You know, that's, that's how I live or whatever. I mean, that's how they get their information. And... I'm, not all of them. You know, but I'm just speaking stereotypically. Maybe that's wrong, but that's the image that comes to my head. Is these these media outlets are trying to appeal to an audience? And they're giving them some kind of shitty information just so that they can get an emotional response from it, and then that emotional response in turn feeds into you know the uh, the political discussion at hand, and and and. Unfortunately, then that debate is fueled by ignorance because the media didn't provide Choose your weapons. that the right information about the topic. Instead, they just went with what was going to pull on the heartstrings. And that's not good. It's not good. So, guys, educate yourselves, man. Especially, I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's just some stupid topic that you don't care much about. But if it's something that you really want to talk about, if it's something you feel passionate about, if you want legislation passed, if you want restrictions put on things, you know, whatever. If, if that's something that you you think that should have a dramatic effect in the world, you know, and you want to be a part of that discussion, educate yourself, please. What the hell are you talking about? And, you know, understand what sources are, you're, you're coming from, and, and, and try and listen to both sides. You know, there's two sides to every coin out there. There's not, even these things that we, you know, I mean, we consider things to be false or true, but not everything is that cut and dry. Some things are far more complex, you know, and specifically when it comes to issues like that, you know, there's a lot of highly nuanced, there's lots and lots of perspectives that have to be considered, and you can't just be an absolutist about every stupid thing, you know. But, if you want to make a good, just a good argument, then understand the perspective of the people that oppose you, you know. Uh, William Cooper, uh, I like William Cooper. And I'm, I'm assuming that maybe not a whole lot of people listening to this know who he is, because in general, not a lot of people do know who he is. But, uh, William Cooper once said that, you know, anyone that enters a battle without first um, studying his enemy is destined to fail. Or some, something along those lines. It's not, that's not verbatim, but, but that, that's the point, you know, like, if, if you're entering into a battle, know what the hell you're doing. Know what side you really do stand on. Don't, don't be played as, don't be played as a pawn, you know. Educate yourself and then, and then if you really do feel passionate about it after you've been educated, then go for it and make your voice heard. You know, but don't make other people look fucking stupid because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That does that, that 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 does horrible damage to lots and lots of arguments that would otherwise be very uh, or totally worth hearing, except they weren't delivered properly because they were too emotionally charged and not properly informed. You know, and, I, and, and we're all guilty of that. We're all guilty. Falling into that emotional spectrum too quickly at times, um, but that shuts us off. You know, you fall into that zone. It shuts you off. You can't communicate with people. You become erratically emotional, and, and then you're not communicating anymore. The whole discussion has been destroyed because 
you're sitting there going, well, I feel this way about this. And it doesn't really matter what's true or what's false. It just matters how you feel. And you can't be facing legislation, laws, and, you know, serious, serious concepts about how you feel. You have to be able to know your shit and back that stuff up, you know. We're in a society right now where ignorance is like, a, it's just a freaking disease, man. It's everywhere. Everything's infected with ignorance. Nobody knows the hell they're talking about or what they're doing anymore. And, you know, that really is up to us to, like, raise the bar, man. If, if we're going to be participating in a pretty, you know, in an in-depth discussion and we don't want to be taken seriously about what the fuck we're talking about, then you at least sort of know what you're talking about. No. I mean, previously in this video, like I, I'd said before, you know, there are a couple of things that, I don't have statistics in front of me, you know, and I admitted that I pretty much didn't really know what I was talking about. It was more something I had gotten the general impression of. But, you know, I tried to... I tried to provide a caveat in that situation. You know, I mean, I'm not perfect, but at the same time, I'm not. I'm not the one trying to get anybody to change any laws. I'm not trying to affect people's fucking lives. You know, you know, violent video games and all these guns and stuff. I like them. I'm not trying to get anything changed. I like them the way that they are. The idea that people can own guns and stuff. I like that too. You know, I don't want to get in the way. I'm not the one trying to get somebody to pass some kind of legislation. I'm not the ones trying to fight against violent video games. Because I'm, I'm the guy playing the video games. And I'm the guy that thinks guns are kind of fun. So, but, you know what? I've never killed anybody. I've never hurt anybody. I've played video games my whole damn life. I'm not a violent person. So, you know, I think that we have going on, what, three generations of, of gamers, and if video games truly did make people violent, well, then we'd have, our, our, our society, our culture of violence would be, it would be way, way beyond what it is right now, because, you know, in general, let's get real, people, we're pretty peaceful, people are pretty peaceful, and gamers tend to be actually really peaceful. You know, we, we just like to hang out, play some games, you know, have a couple of drinks or whatever. We just hang out with our friends, do our thing. We're pretty passive. We like to order pizza. We like to, you know, Netflix and chill and all of that crap. You know, we're pretty, we're pretty passive folks, even though we do spend time shooting perfect strangers with, you know, infinite amounts of ammunition. But, but nobody's getting hurt. You know, it's just a simulated experience. Here I am playing basically the equivalent of what could pretty much be considered like one of the most sophisticated violence simulators in the world. I mean, the way that VR works, that's, that's what it is, right? I mean, at least when it comes to a game like this, this is a violence simulator, and this is about as realistic as it gets. I mean, I could I could go one more and do something like, oh, I don't know, I mean, what are these other ones? I mean, there's a lot of more realistic games that I don't tend to play because I don't think that that's the fun part about games. I don't really want them to be realistic. I understand some people like that, but you know, there's like what are the battlefield or and PUBG and stuff like this, um, you know, that's a more realistic violent video game like this. I mean, here, man, I keep dying at this one spot, don't I? You know, these, these demon guys, there's no such thing as those, so I, mean, I guess we could consider that a little cartoony. But yeah, I could take this VR thing, I could go and, and basically play out a, a war simulator. You know, and many, many people do that, you know, many gamers, that's what they're playing, things like 
Call of Duty and stuff, and then even here in VR, I could take it to the next level, and, and it would be that much more realistic and immersive. It's not going to make me any more violent than than I ever was before. Uh, I would I'd probably argue that it goes in the other direction, you know, and. So what is it, you know? What is it about American culture that makes us so prone to violence? It's not our guns, you know, and, and let's get fair, it's not just Americans either. I mean, yes, we have a we have a little bit we're a little bit more gung ho. But violence is going on all over the fucking place. You know, let's not let's not try and fool ourselves here, guys. We were burning witches years, hundreds of years ago. People were ripping, pricking people's hearts out, doing human sacrifices and shit. So, so let's not let's not kid ourselves in thinking that anything's changed. But I mean, so what is it though? I mean, if if there is this thing that's inherently violent about people, and, and maybe in some cultures more than others, at specific times and more than others, um, what is that? You know, and is there a way that we as a society can legitimately battle that? I don't think it's the guns. I don't think it's the video games. I think that it's something inherent in our culture, something about the way that we treat each other, the way that, uh, and, you know, I don't have that, I don't have the answers, I don't know, you know, and my general idea is that we're kind of screwed up, um, holy crap, But how do we go about fixing that? Can we fix it? You know, is that just the way we are, or is it an effect of our modern environment? Or I mean, what is it? You know? Where would it all lead? Huh? You know, I don't know. I've always kind of thought that at the end of the day, it all just kind of breaks down to the there's always going to be some crazy people, and I don't think you can get rid of that. I think that no matter what, there's just always going to be somebody that's going to do something nuts. I mean, I live here in Colorado, and oh, here in Colorado. and here in Colorado, like we've had some crazy things happen. Okay, hey, you guys can check the history of of lunatics that freak out, and Colorado's pretty uh. We're pretty popular for these assholes, but why is that? I, I don't know. What is there something about Colorado culture that makes us more inerrant to freak out and go lunatic than anybody else? I mean, because that's weird. There's a lot of like hippies and stuff around here, so I don't know how that would correlate, but you know, I mean, some years back there was some guy that that basically went all twisted metal and he made a bulldozer into a crazy war vehicle and he smashed up town hall and all kinds of stuff and he ended up dying or something, shot himself or something. Then there was, and then there was Columbine stuff that happened and there's the Aurora shooter guy and I mean, it seems like every few years like somebody's just popping off here in Colorado doing Doing something really crazy. I mean, everybody is. We all have our kind of crazies. You know, like Florida, you guys down there, you guys got a special kind of crazy. And I don't think you guys can even disagree with that. But. Yeah, so what? I mean, I don't know. What is that? What is that thing? What is it that makes people freak the fuck out? And just lose it. You know, it's not. Everybody likes to blame all this other stuff. I know that. I know that it can't be good when. 
when antidepressants have a side effect of suicidal tendencies and thoughts, I, I, that can be very good. Uh, I think they kind of missed the point on that one, but... Yeah, and I've heard that there are a lot, that's something that's quite common with these people that freak out and have mass shootings or something. I've heard that they have uh, um, a lot of them are on mood, mood changing, I don't know, like, uh, you know, I don't want to specifically call it antidepressants, they're probably some kind of different medications, but that sometimes seems to be a common factor. But maybe it's not the medication, maybe it's the fact that they, they, they needed to be on the medication was something that led to a different thing. Who knows? I don't know. And all I know is... I, I do know that if it really was video games and things like that, there would be way more uh, way more problems because look, we're talking about there are so many people that play video games, and we'd have we'd have a worldwide epidemic. It would it would be madness. Man, I'm not gonna stop here. Because everybody plays video games, you know, video games are a big deal. Especially, now they just keep getting bigger, but, you know, video games are also a worldwide phenomenon. It's stuff that, it's not unique to America. And, neither is violence, you know, I mean, I don't know. Uh, like I said before, I don't have the answers to this stuff, I don't know. I just know that we can't be pointing fingers in stupid directions without having the right kind of evidence to lead us to that. You know, and have a, a real, rational, logical discussion about, about these things. That's the only way that progress can be made. You can't have any... You should never rely on progress that came from ignorance. Like, that's just, I would think that you would already know that. And I know, and, and I would think that that shouldn't matter what side of the argument you come from. You should at least speak, you know, you should at least be willing to, here we go again, blue guides. Yeah. It's rough. It sure wouldn't have changed up. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If you're living around in your bed, guys, just realize that, like, there's more to it than just people who play video games and making their kids fucking violent. Or all these people own guns and none of them... Well, you know, I mean... The amount, yes, every now and then somebody freaks the fuck out and they go crazy and they hurt a bunch of people. But for every one of those people, there's like 10 million gun owners that don't do that. So obviously it's not the guns either. It's not the fact that people are owning the guns. It's something else. It's something in the culture. It's something in the psyche. It's something, some, something very clearly it's not being addressed. Because if it were being addressed, then maybe these people wouldn't feel like that they, this is the way that they have to lash out. You know? I think there's definitely a problem when we slap their faces all over the news and everybody happens to know their name. You know, I think that if they kept it just a general practice that, like, we, you know, we, we kept their, I don't know, if there was a way to, like, not make these fucking assholes famous, you know, instead of everybody knowing that it's a damn household name, they become famous, they get, they get all kinds of notoriety, and maybe that was the whole point behind what they were doing, was that, like, Maybe they felt like nobody ever listened to them, and they kind of got in a situation where they were like, you know what, I'll make you fucking listen. You know, I'm not saying that that's a, a good perspective, I'm just saying that, you know, these are possibilities, you know. 
because they are just humans, you know, they're just humans, the same as us, we're not, that's the scariest part about it, they're not monsters, they're not like this video game. This video game, this is all just computer program, fictitious, weird, fun, fun and games and bullshit, you know, it's a little stress relief, but your mind already knows none of this is real, you know, I'm just chilling in this space, and not once have I felt like I was seriously in danger, or that I was actually killing anything. Not, not at all. Well, I already know this is a simulation. I know it's not real. Like, and even as realistic as it is, it's not fucking real. It's not the same. It doesn't. Your brain doesn't correlate these things. The only thing that maybe something like VR could help you with is perhaps working on your aim or like. You know, I don't know, just being in the moment a little bit better. You know, could it be a valuable simulation experience of some sort at times for maybe training soldiers and stuff for certain environments? Maybe. It's a possibility. But it's not, it doesn't actually simulate that thing. It's not going to turn somebody into a killer. It's not going to turn them into a fucking soldier or whatever, that, that has to be done in all these other capacities. Video games can only be done to help maybe, like, refine reaction time and, you know, maybe help develop strategy, stuff like that. It's not going to turn you into a freaking lunatic, it's just, it's not. You know, it's like playing Monopoly never turned anybody into a fucking ruthless millionaire. It's not how these things work. Playing pretend is something we've always done. It's a part of us. You know. Orbital laser strike. You know, and it should always be kept in mind that you should never blame the actions of someone on someone else. Like, especially, you know, something like, how fucked up is that to say, oh, your video game has turned my son into a murderer. How fucked up is that? That's not the fucking situation. That's fucked up. They're attacking artists saying that they're brainwashing their kids into becoming murderers or whatever. It's not what's going on at all. You know, a lot of it is you're not paying attention to what your kids are doing, and that alone could lead into your kid wanting to be fucking more violent and shit. You know, maybe they don't feel wanted or whatever, but... But yeah, maybe you shouldn't let your kids play the violent freaking video games in the first place because, you know, it does take a specific level of maturity and, and there's a reason why there are rating systems and shit. But you can't blame the, the artist. You don't insult these people who busted their ass creating this product that a large amount of us enjoy and think it's kick ass. They delivered exactly what it was that we were wanting, and now you're trying to blame them and say that they're, you know, they're they're corrupting the youth and creating everybody, turning people into killers. You want to blame that on them? Like that's some bullshit. It's really disrespectful, you know. The last part. You know, people should be looking more close to home for, for reasons why people freak the fuck out. Things that are that are real, you know, and not not some over worried bullshit, you know. I understand that whenever something bad happens, everybody wants to point the finger and they want to say, Oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. You know, we all want to be able to look at something and stop these things from happening in the future. But the sad reality is, is that like maybe 
can't always do that, you know. Things do happen just one time. And sometimes you don't know that it's going to happen. Maybe there was no fucking clues. People, you know, there, there are people that can, you know, that end up going through psychological background checks and things like this for weapons. And they passed every test given to them, you know, and the system had no, no reason to withhold anything like that. Because, you know, they weren't criminals. They didn't have past psychological history problems or whatever. There was no, there was no reason why they should have been disallowed to, to do what they were doing. You know, and up to that point, they were law-abiding citizens. And, but there's always that first time, folks. There's always going to be that first time that somebody is no longer a law-abiding citizen. They, they, now they're a criminal. You know? and, and even so, at the point where people become criminals, you can't stop... Uh, you can't stop criminals from doing criminal activity anyway. Being a criminal is against the law. That's that's like what criminal means. So like I said, I don't have any of these answers. I just think people are pointing in the wrong fucking directions, man. I think people should be more educated and take this shit more seriously. Not to say they don't, they just, they're not taking their own discussion seriously. And consequently, nobody is taking them seriously because they sound like an idiot, because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. trying to change any laws. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to do anything like that. I'm not interested in anything like that. I'm more interested in just leaving people the fuck alone and letting people just, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to pass laws. I'm not trying to convince people that things should be changed. I'm more or less just saying, look, things, things are fine. Like laws and all that shit aren't going to change anything. With, you know, these things have to be addressed on a more serious level than just, hey, we're going to pass new laws and people won't be able to get guns and therefore they're not going to kill people. That's fucking stupid, okay? In case you guys forgot, like the Boston Marathon bombing was a fucking pressure cooker, okay? You go to the Walmart, get a fucking pressure cooker and make a bomb, okay? You go to Ace Hardware store and get yourself some fucking kerosene and shit. You know, there's there's ways to make serious, serious, serious damage with 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 very, very, very easily accessible um, things. You know, like I said, like a like a damn pressure cooker. You make a bomb with a pressure cooker in less than 15 minutes, and so. I mean, should we ban pressure cookers? Like, should anybody that's buying a pressure cooker get a fucking background check or whatever? I mean, no, no, no. I would think that's dumb. Somebody out there is probably like, hell yeah. But I, you know, I'm kind of on the on the side of things where like the less intervention, the the better. I like it. You know, I don't, I don't really like the government putting their nose in every damn thing. I think, in general, pretty much whatever they stick their face in, they screw up, for the most part. So, I don't think the solution is to be found with them. I think if there is a solution to be found, it's going to be found with us. Like, you know, we have, we have to change internally, as a people, and as, you know, as a culture, as a planetary culture, as, as a nation. And... 
even our subcultures inside of our nations. But if you don't have fun, we're completely, we have so much division happening in our own world right now. Tell them about buying the video games and how bullshit it is. Yeah. Good. Because the fuck it is. Yep. Let video games be violent, man. It's fun. Let people own their freaking guns, too. As long as they're not killing anybody, leave them alone. Leave people alone. My boss owns guns, and he's one of the nicest people I know. Yeah. <laughs> Most gun owners I know are the nicest people in the world. Most of them are like cowboys or ex-military. Sickening-ass Christian liberals. Yeah. Weird. Like... Honestly, the amount of people who are depicted as having guns, the ones I know, could have fucking afford them. Nonetheless, even fucking be ballsy enough to steal one. Now, I will say that we used to have a neighbor, and he was really into guns, and he was a god dang idiot. Oh, God. What? Don't let him buy a gun. Well... There should be an IQ test for guns. Well, they won't let him buy a gun now because that guy ended up going to jail. Felony. But, and now he can't get a gun. So, which is good. You know, because that guy doesn't need guns. I mean, but he really was kind of an exception. I mean, he, he was a special kind of idiot. And you could tell from like a mile away that this guy, he just wasn't safe. It wouldn't matter if you gave him a gun or a shovel. It, and, and it wasn't that he would hurt somebody else. He was probably much more likely to hurt himself. <laughs> Not even trying to commit suicide, but just being a dumbass. The likelihood that he might shoot himself in the leg or something. He's, uh, I'm he, surprised he did. He was that guy. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't cheddar himself if that's an eight mile reference. Yeah, no uh, dude, I'm I'm so surprised that they freaking idiot can do something dumb like that. Yeah, um, uh, most people are And you know people will say, Well, you know, maybe we should keep people away from having guns so people like him can't have guns and hurt themselves. Look, okay, sometimes there are people you just, this is, there is a thing called natural selection, guys, and you can't just regulate common sense. Some people are just fucking dumb, and nature has a way of sorting these people out. Whether it's... Not quick enough. That's true. Not quick enough. That is very true. But yeah, you know, you can't go around making laws for the whole damn planet based on the actions of a couple of freaking idiots. If you did that, then we would all be in padded shells and boxes wearing freaking football helmets and tooth guards everywhere we go over. But you can't just do that. Plus, that's not your fucking place. People are fucking stupid. They, they should have the right to be fucking stupid. I'm not saying he was mentally challenged or anything. No. He wasn't handicapped in any way or whatever. He was just an idiot. And, you know, can't, just can't fix stupid. I'm sure that there's a, I'm sure I'm quoting somebody when I say that. But, but yeah, I mean, on that side of things, I'm sure glad that that dumb motherfucker doesn't deal with can't get guns anymore. What was funny was that huh, he, I knew he was stupid, but I never felt threatened. Like I said, it was probably much more likely he'd end up hurting himself. My God. I don't even know if this can defeat Oh, man. Rex, you want to give this a whirl? Yeah. This is the Daily Challenge. I've just been doing the daily challenge this whole time. What's the daily challenge? What I was just doing. Well, what, 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 is there anything specific? Like anything in the challenge I gotta do specifically? No, no you just keep killing things until they die. So it's a way, it's just pretty much like a survival, but an endurance round? Yep, something like that. Yeah, it's like, you just keep 
Just keep going. Just keep going. Or at least I haven't defeated it yet. I think the most that I shot was something like 1600 <coughs> oh, Okay. I go with the health kit. Every time. Health facts has saved my life so many times. Yeah, guys, so don't, don't take me as some kind of a fucking authority on this matter. Why? Because I'm not. It's just something that's been in pop culture and on the media and on, you know, social networks and stuff a lot lately. And everybody's putting in their two cents. And I figured, why not, you know? Let's get a little wider on our perspective on it. And honestly, violent video games has been my outlet for when I've gotten angry at people. And I think there's a good thing to be said for that. Like, it's a stress reliever. And, and I think heavy music relax, yeah. is, is very much kind of that same way. It's like, like heavy metal and shit, and death metal and all that. How many times have you seen a Facebook post that says people, oh, I need to listen to something loud and angry? Yes, yeah, so like, get it out. We all know that person. He, he, he keeps posting all the time. <laughs> And if you don't see that guy, you are that guy. God, I hate these fart boxes. Snipers! The coolest uh, position in video games, and most people often suck at it. Yeah. So I'm not an authority. Rex Ryan is not an authority. If We're I not was, like you guys would listen to me. We're not media outlets. We don't. We're not trying to inform people about whatever the fuck side of the debate you're supposed to be on. We're just sitting and we're thinking. Just kind of participating. That's all. We're a bunch of annoyed dudes. Yeah. <laughs> More than anything, that's kind of what's going on is that we're just fucking annoyed by this. You know, it sucks that these massacres happen, but they, they're nothing new, man. They've been happening since I was a kid. And that's just a sick, sad reality. Can't blame video games. You definitely can't play with guns. Guns have been around for freaking 100 years before. I wonder what game they were playing during 1962. What game were they playing during uh, 1482? What games were the Romans playing? Because, man, I would play that shit. Yeah. I'm sure the Romans were playing some really violent video games because clearly their, their culture was much more violent than their own. I'm getting fucking raped. Dude, I'm telling you, yeah. This is our job. Mommy. Turn the music down, because that shit's loud. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely did. I tried. To it turn. helps. Well, I hope, I like it when I I crank that shit up when I play, but when we're streaming, it's just if I had that that volume all the way up. Like I said at the beginning of this video, guys, I I tried I tried to bring the volume down for the game because it just it's music is totally epic and it's full of explosions, serious sound. Oh, I got a new gun. It's pretty loud. So, I'm trying to just kind of turn that down a little bit so that hopefully you guys are able to hear the discussion over all of the chaos and Siri. No promises, though. The Siri Sam is loud. This game is loud. It has a really awesome, epic soundtrack that anybody can get into, man. It's, it's pumping. 
Like, it's a really good fucking rock jam that I just can't help but appreciate, man. It's intense, man. It really, it really fits what, with the gameplay really well. See, you're, you, you use the shield so much better than me. I just totally forget about it all the time. This is time block right now. Come on, fucking die! I hate those guys. But yeah, those guys do suck. Those weird green cutie things. The fart boxers? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? You should take two steps to the left. too much on talking to. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, so I'm killing things. Perfect time. I haven't played this one in a while either. I like this game. This this one's too enjoyable. Yeah. Like creators of Serious Sam, like you guys really did a good job. This is a hell of a game. So uh, if you guys are, you know, if you guys watching this and you guys are looking for games that you can be playing on VR and stuff. This is uh, one, this is what I got you for Christmas last year. Yeah. This game is really good. And, oh, I could have used my med kit. Dang, I think you already beat my score. Okay. That was five minute run. Yeah, this is definitely an endurance. Step more to the left. Yeah, I see the thing now. The, uh, yeah, this game is great, though. The, uh, it was surprisingly for the, uh, you know, if, if you guys can't tell, I mean, the graphics on this game are pretty damn good. A lot of VR games are really, you know, they rely on low-poly graphics. And there's not a whole lot of texturing and stuff because it tends to be pretty heavy on a system, but... You're almost sad that you can't look at some things long enough in this one. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's so fast. But it's amazing how quickly it runs. The frame rate's great. The my my system doesn't have any problems running this game. Even when we're streaming, it seems fine. Um, Even though the first time we got this one, it was the hardest one to get the stream. I don't think it was because of this though. I think it's because our internet just decides to suck. A lot of the time. Yeah, folks, that's a pretty common thing for us. Yeah, it's all part of the lag running. But yeah, as far as the system running this game, yeah, here we are streaming, and the game's running fine. We don't have any hiccups. There's not, uh, like if you watch our last video, we, uh, come on, lag. Oh yeah, right as I'm saying that there's not really any frame rate drops and stuff. But if you watch our last video that we did on Gorn, you'll see that the frame rate was much, much more difficult to deal with in that game. Oh. And that's not to say that Gorn doesn't play well because it really does play very nice, but but while we're streaming at the same time, Fuck you, bitch. it's difficult. Uh, and it kind of bogs down the system a little bit. But this game, it doesn't do that. I was impressed from the very moment that we started playing this game that it was as high a resolution that it is, and the 3D is as good as it is. And yet, I mean, it runs incredibly quick. Frame rate's great. Response time's great. Like, I, Yeah, response time is overwhelmingly awesome. I don't know. I don't know what you guys did when you made this game, man. But optimized it is. It's, uh, you need to teach these other developers a few tricks because, man, you guys got this figured out. You know, there are there are so many games out there that don't have nearly the resolution on graphics. The polish, is. amazing. Especially if you're going with a even higher grade system. Oh man, that'd be awesome. Yeah. 
Well, and it's just, it's so smooth. It's super smooth. Like, I don't know. Yeah, they, they, have, they have prime optimization in this game. Very, very nice. Very smooth. Very, you know, responsive. Uh, frame rate's great. Anti-aliasing is dead on. Like, the textures are good. The shadows are good. The particle Game effects is are actually great. on. The 3D effects. Yeah, the aim is dead on. It's they got it, man. They figured it out with this one. And so, yeah, I mean, if you guys are looking for like a really good VR title, the Serious Sam is your game, people. Yeah, if you like wave based shooters, this is as good as it gets on VR so far. As far as I can tell, this is this is really, really good. Um it does get a little bit repetitive at times. Uh, it is the game, though. I but think, I think its intensity makes up for it. Is it just keeps happening, and uh, and a lot of the levels and things are actually like procedurally generated, so they're a little bit different every time you play them. So that's nice. That is great, Mike. And the first time you experience that, it's weird. Yeah, when you come from an history of expecting to know like how many enemies and where they're going to show up and how they move and stuff, you know, and then all of a sudden you play the same level and, and it's completely different, that it definitely increases the replay value. We like to play this game just to just to waste some time. You know, we'll sit around, and we'll play, we'll play Serious Sam for a few hours. Oh, at a time. Here we go. Whew. Damn, nice. That's a rough challenge, it but I'm is. averaging like five minutes, four to five minutes on that thing. Yeah. Which is nice for once, you know? Yeah. Whew. But man, this game really kills your arms. <laughs> man, when you when I you're almost, playing with the I, almost, I felt like I could have cried when, that night. You guys won't let me live that down. Well, that, that, I mean, it's legit, man. When you have to play that bow and arrow level, uh, that really will wear off your arms. That's something about these VR games. They can wear you out more than you would think. You're like, yeah, we're just playing a video game, man. I'm going to be fine. Like, dude, you're going to be sweating. One round later, your arms are like, Heavy. It's one of the things about VR that people kind of forgot. It's you doing the motions. You know, you guys can tell, as I was saying earlier, that the levels are always different. But if you go back through the video, or if you've been watching the whole time, you'll notice that this is actually very repetitive. It's the same one each way. But that's because when we open this up, we this decided a challenge, we're going to do the daily challenge, which it's probably the it's, same. It's not an actual level in the game. It's, it's well, a the, challenge. The so. map itself is a map, but the yeah, it's yeah. So it was de it was designed to be this specific way. The waves were specifically, you know, laid out in this way. I don't know. I don't know what the daily challenge is. Other than <laughs> just keep this game being fresh, so that people have some variety to play even after they've beaten the game and stuff, which is cool. I like that. But considering that this is just the daily challenge and we're not actually playing the, the real game here, um, then yeah, it's not, it's not procedurally generated this time. So. So don't be leaving in the comments and be like, what do you mean procedurally generated? And that's the same level over and over again. Yeah, I know. I know. But when you're playing the normal modes, uh, the campaign is the same. But when you're playing one of the other game modes, that not, apart from the story and the challenges, it well, does spice it up. Like the yeah. endless mode, that's really nice because you can play that over and over again and not experience the same setup of enemies. They won't, they, it, it does change up that aspect. Yep. You know, don't be surprised if we do more serious sound in the future where we try and showcase some more of that stuff. 
Um, remember, if you see, if you already have a bunch of drops, remember that. You're not doing it. Oh yeah, you are. The goddamn thing ain't working for shit. Use, yeah, like you gotta always make sure you're using two of these. Remember right now, settle down, Turbo. I, no, I, I, I screwed myself okay. earlier on a drone on a right. drone squad, dude. I was it's okay. Saying, I, I don't need. I don't need a backseat pilot. Backseat shooter. I don't need anybody tell me how to play. You know how it goes. Shoot the guy on the left. Like I, the I other left. My left. Like, you can worry about it when you play. Oh, I have to come. I have to give some criticism. I hate that part. Dude, that got me in so many times in a row. But I don't really care. That, I'm not even really trying. That skull rush is bad, though. Like, they, I couldn't kill them even with an orbital strike. They still got to rush me. That damn turret wasn't working for crap. I try to... I, I, I found that the turret doesn't work for fucking groups. I wish I could just use the pistol and so. stuff. I mean, I get it. You're running out of ammo, and yeah, I mean, you know, I get it. But I just wish I could use some of my favorite guns the whole time. Maybe we have to beat the game and unlock some of the things and then we can do that. We could like customize our own levels, that'd be cool. And this game, guys, has so many crazy weapons. This daily challenge has it's only the certain set of weapons that uh, that are designated. But as you go through and you, you pick up what all the weapons from the game go through. That double barrel shotgun, dude, that thing is that awesome. That thing's pretty savage, killing yeah. Those, killing those fart boxes. Oh, yeah, that thing's pretty savage. Yeah, that thing's pretty savage. Captain here, his sister 
actually likes this game a lot. Did she kick ass during it? Yeah, she did. She did enjoy this game quite a bit. Ah, you want to go again? Uh, I'm actually good. All right. Well, I enjoy. I, I do love this game. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Uh, Guys, this is a must buy. Like, truly, yeah. I don't care when you see this video if or what it is. If it's on sale, even better. I got it for Christmas for him last year on the Steam, on a Steam sale. So it's a pretty common. It's a pretty common game. I'd recommend it. It's it's a freaking blast. Yeah, it's a good party game. When people come over, it is fun as hell to see them like getting all like flustered over it. It's great. It's an amazing game. I definitely recommend picking it up if you get the chance. Yeah, well, and uh, you know, if you guys are interested in maybe if you do have your own VR setup or if it's something that you're looking to get, but you know, you don't know which games to get. Seriously, if you're looking for a wave based shooter that's Good quality game. It's got a lot of replay factor. There's a lot of wave-based and, shooters. And, yeah, ones, there's a ton. Especially and, ones with bows. But if you're looking for one that's gonna that you can trust that it will run on your system really nice, you know, this is where it's at. Because honestly, I, I was really surprised with how well this game ran on our setup, considering. Uh, considering that we've had much more difficulty with specific games that are that are low poly, uh, and I was a little worried about this game when we first got it because I saw that it was so uh, graphically uh, nice, you know, it's so polished. But sure enough, we played it, no problems, no problems. It runs real nice and smooth. Had very, very few hiccups. And, uh, yeah, lots of weapons. <laughs> lot, they're all lots fun. of levels. All the weapons are fun to use. And lots I, of enemies. Which is refreshing. Lots of all kinds of variety. There's a, a, a wide scale of difficulty. Uh, like Great I said, soundtrack. As the mentioned. soundtrack kicks ass. If you like skill trees, there's one of those, but I don't feel like getting too into it. But there is a skill tree if you're interested. Yeah, so there's a, there is a lot to be had. You know, there is a lot to there be had. There was more and, content uh, in this than I was expecting for a VR game. True. True. Way more contact. Wait, content. Yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, this is Kenton Crizzo. Rex Riot for Lag Rooter Gaming, and uh, we are signing off for the night. Yeah, um, good one. So yeah. Tune in to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and all those other fancy places to find Lacker Entertainment stuff. And uh, if you really, really like what we do, drop by our Patreon and show us a little love and help us with the ever-present battle against the lag. And if you want merchandise, um, just go ahead and downgrade your computer. It's virtually the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? If you want if you want a lag runner official system, just, just downgrade. Just Take so, out half of your RAM. Get a Mac. And 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 get CenturyLink Internet, and you'll and you'll you can have your very own Lag Runner Gaming Simulator. Anyway, guys, uh, we'll peace out for the night. Um, don't be dumbasses. Don't sound like stupid idiots when you're debating issues that are really important. Um, yeah, be, be serious them, about it. It's yeah, a real be issue. Be serious. Too. At least, you know. Give yourself enough respect to at least know what the fuck you're talking about. And take it and serious. And don't use words like fully semi-automatic. Please, for the love of God. Just don't do that I wasn't that here for that, anymore. but he expressed my view, so it's cool. Don't ever. It's not real. That makes and you sound like an idiot. Care. And none of us want to sound like idiots, even though we all sound like idiots sometimes. But at least make an effort not to sound like an idiot, especially when you're entering into debates that have serious consequences and laws and things can be passed, like whether violent video games should be made or whether people should own guns. You should at least know a little bit about what the fuck you're talking about. All right, guys. Well, that's enough for the night. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.